Hello, today we'll look at gestational diabetes. And why is this important? As we know, pregnant women can uh, get a increased sugar level, and then we call it diabetes mellitus. But we don't call it diabetes mellitus type 2 in this case. We call it gestational diabetes because we diagnosed the diabetes itself during the pregnancy and not before. Before, Because if we say that we diagnose a patient before pregnancy, then it's called pre-gestational. Pre meaning before. And that's the different difference here because as we know, many patients have diabetes mellitus and if a mother already has diabetes, we need to treat it before the patient gets pregnant, of course. But in this case, we didn't know that the woman had a diabetes before and therefore we, we classify it as gestational. And it's important because it has some serious uh, complications for the mother and the child. As for example, as we know, the child can grow too much. If we have a too much sugar, the child will grow too much. If the woman eats too much, this, it will grow. This is called macrosomia. And if we have macrosomia, then it can lead to, for example, perinatal complications. For example, birth uh, uh, trauma. And uh, that means that we need to have an operative delivery. We need to make a cesarean section. And, and the baby cannot uh, go through the normal path that it should follow because it's the child is too large. For example, the shoulder is is uh, then uh, not allowing it because the shoulder is too wide or, or the head is too large. This is all complications of macrosomia. Then we of, of course also have polyhydramnios. This means that we have an increased amount of water in this in this stomach and that is also leading to a lot of complications and, and a lot of toxic side effects can happen if we have polyhydramnios. So we have polyhydramnios, we have macrosomia leading as we said, to perinatal mortality even, that the child can die, so that the neonate can die. Then we have other complications like, for example, the hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy, meaning that the heart is getting enlarged, thickened of this baby. And, and that is very, very dangerous. Then, of course, we have other side effects. For example, the baby can have metabolic or respiratory complications. The patient, uh, the, this small child will not breathe normally the, uh, uh, and she will or he will develop metabolic complications like diabetes mellitus later on in life and also as a neonate. Then, of course, we have, uh, for example, as we said, operative delivery. The most common type of uh, operative delivery is cesarean section. Or we need to take a very old method that we use was a forceps, that we need to remove the child head or we need to cut up the vagina because we need to make some more space there. And this is all leading to an increased risk of mortality. Then we have also uh, diabetes leading to an increased blood pressure. And this is what we call preeclampsia. So when we have increased blood pressure, that can cause an increased risk of the placenta dying. We, we don't want a high blood pressure. And therefore, we need to treat the blood pressure also. So as you see, gestational diabetes mellitus is very important. So what do we do? First thing that the doctor has to do before we even uh, go on with the pregnancy, the first prenatal visit, we will check a hemoglobin A1c level. Why? Because we can screen the patients. If the patient is already in the beginning having a higher level than 6.5% of hemoglobin A1c, then we know that the risk of gestational diabetes will be very high. We don't say that the patient has gestational diabetes, but we say that she can develop it. Because usually we will measure the oral glucose tolerance test, meaning we, we give uh, 75 gram of glucose, so meaning sugar, to this woman. After one hour, we measure the level. After two hours, we measure the level. And also, we measure the level at the first spot. So, to conclude once again, the, the woman will be asked to fast eight hours. She will come in the morning. Then we will take a blood, blood sample first, fasting blood glucose. Then we will give this sugar tablet 75 gram. Then we will wait one hour. We will measure the blood glucose again. Then we will wait one more hour, so meaning two hours, and we will measure the blood glucose again. And there are some cutoff value, values, meaning we have, for example, 92 milligram per deciliter of glucose, of fasting glucose. If it's above that, we know that this patient is having increased risk of gestational diabetes. If 
the value is more than 180 in the first hour, then it's also a sign. If the value is more than 153 in the second hour, it's also increased. Of course, we have other units. We have millimol per liter or we have milligram per deciliter. These values which I mentioned was milligram per deciliter. But if we talk about millimol per liter, many European countries use that, then we have cutoff values of more than 5.1 millimol, then we have cutoff of more than 10 millimol and more than 8.5. That is the same thing. So 92 equals 5.1, 180 equals more than 10. And then we have uh, 153 being more than 8.5. Okay, so what did we do? We, when did we do this test? When did we do the oral glucose tolerance test? Between 24 and 28 weeks. So as you see, we did two things. In the first prenatal visit, we checked hemoglobin A1c value. This is a glucated hemoglobin, so it's, a, it's actually a sugar attached to the hemoglobin, and this shows you the value of the glucose in the pregnant woman in the past three months. So the previous values. And this is a very good sign, first sign. But then at the 24 week to 28 week, we will check the, with oral glucose tolerance test. And if this is positive, then we will treat the patient. And after we have been treating the patient in after the pregnancy and everything, the birth, we need to check between the fourth week and the twelfth week after the birth of the child that the levels of oral glucose tolerance test is still high or normal. If it's still high, then it's suggesting that the patient actually has diabetes mellitus type 2 and we need to treat that accordingly. If the value will be low, then we can tell the patient that you didn't, you don't have diabetes mellitus type 2, you had a gestational diabetes mellitus. We don't need to treat, treat you anymore. Only if you get pregnant again, the risks will be high. So we need to discuss the risks. If the patient is having a high level uh, in the fourth to twelfth week, then we will treat it with un uh, anti-diabetic medications and we will say, uh, we will um, not say that she is not allowed to have another child, she is, but we need to really make sure that the glucose levels will be normal. So to conclude now, we can say that we have a lot of complications, we have a lot of values to memorize here as a doctor or as a patient, and then we have the treatment, and the treatment will not be dealt with today. We'll, de we'll deal with that in another video. So thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.